Hey, it's the morning. Let's uh, do the second for the sourdough overnight pancakes. So here's the bowl today. So I don't know if you can see, but it's quite bubbly. And um, I took a picture of the top view. And do you see this uh, mark right here? So that tells me it got up to that point and then it started to sink a little. And that's all good and great. And it smells exactly as it should smell. Um, it's kind of got that um, sour bakery smell to it. So let's add, um, you're gonna need two beaten eggs. We'll give you the re recipe, I almost said receipt. Um, we'll give you the recipe uh, somewhere so that you can see this. So get you two eggs and beat them up. Or if you don't eat eggs like me, I made a flax egg out of um, two tablespoons of flax, ground flax meal and a third a cup of water. And then get you some butter or oil, doesn't matter, a quarter cup melted. And then in this little dish, I've got one teaspoon of baking soda, soda, and um, a half a teaspoon of salt. So I'm just gonna sprinkle this across the surface. And I'll just mix this all in. And then I'll meet you over by the stove. Hey, we're at the stove. So I've got a cast iron skillet that's heating up. And you don't have to have cast iron to make pancakes. Of course, you can use whatever skillet you want. You can use a griddle, which is great. Um, but I like cast iron because it uh, brings me back to my um, prairie town days. So uh, I've got my batter here and we're just going to test to see if the skillet's hot enough so it's important to do before you start slapping pancakes on there i'm just going to take a little Ooh, let's let's oil up our pan first with whatever you want oh yeah it's dancing so you can see uh you can tell if it's hot enough too if the oil kind of gives this like shimmery look to it I'm just going to smear it around a bit. Add it, I might add a lot more oil. We'll find out. So let's find out if our pan's hot enough. Just do a little test piece, the sacrificial first clump. And resist the urge to fiddle with it. Patience is a virtue, one that I currently work on all the time. So you'll know that it's time to flip whenever the edges start to dry out, just like any other pancake. And if you are gonna use cast iron, and you probably already know this if you uh, live that cast iron life, you need to take the time to preheat this um, because if you try to heat it up very quickly, it'll just get hot spots instead of heating up the whole thing entirely with even heat. All right, I have confidence that I can flip this little nugget. I think it's just about perfect. Oh, look at that rise, you see it rise? Yeah, right. All right, well, I'm gonna move this dude to the side. Re-oil that little spot and then just start flopping away. Now, I have very poor pancake flipping skills, so I don't make my pancakes much larger than this. It's kind of, I've got a third of a cup scoop here. And, uh, you know, if you're a pancake king or queen, you just do it, you do you. And because of my Four skills here. I'm only going to put three, three in at a time. And look at my little nugget. Too early to flip. Shouldn't have done that. I might see how this batch goes before I turn the heat up. I have a kind of inkling that I might need to turn the heat up. It's um, just about medium right now.
But see with this only uh, teaspoon of baking soda, what's happening here is the yeast is rising as it would in bread. So the yeast touches the pan, it gets hot, and it's like, yes, all of this heat. And then all of a sudden it's like, no, too much heat. And then it dies, of course, but that's okay because we've got that rise. Hey, so instead of staring at me watching uh, the pancakes rise, um, I've done a batch. And a couple things to note is that the pancakes will do better if you uh, cook them low and slow. So like medium, medium, low, resist that urge to crank them up to get them to go faster because what will happen is the outside, the outside will get too brown, but the inside will still be raw. Because this is very much um, a very bread-like pancake. It's also ideal for waffles. If you've got a waffle maker, you could just stick them in the waffle iron. So I'm just gonna keep on making pancakes. It's very important to, to re-oil between, between the uh, batches. And you don't need to stir the batter in between the batches. It's actually better if you don't. Just scoop it on in there and start flopping. And these are really great too, left over. So since I've got enough pancakes to feed a dang army, I'm going to freeze them. So I'll just freeze them in some like plastic freezer bags. And then when I want pancakes later, I'll just pop them in the toaster or reheat them in a warm oven and, and then I'll be good to go. So one more thing. As I was just sampling my, my uh, pancakes here, I just wanted to show you the texture of them. So they've got some structure, kind of like bread, like I mentioned, but they're nice and, and light on the inside. So what I've got ideas about these. So you could eat them like a pancake, like you normally do. I like to slap peanut butter on it um, with or without maple syrup, but that's me. You could, Actually, they're they're kind of right on the line between sweet and savory. So this would make a great breakfast sandwich. So if you wanted to like slap some egg and cheese on there in between it and like two pancakes on the, on the top and bottom, like that'd be really great. Or um, I would even dip this in hummus, but I put many things in hummus. But you know, just give them a try, see what you think, and then uh, experiment because what more fun than experimenting in the kitchen, right? So I hope you give them a try and I hope you enjoy them and I'll see you uh, for another recipe later. Take care.